Hey everyone, it's Howard from Aorus and today we'll be unboxing the all new X670 Aorus Elite AX motherboard. This is going to be the newest generation of AM5 motherboards and the X670 Aorus Elite AX is going to be our entry level from the Aorus lineup. These X670 motherboards are an upgrade from the previous generation because they'll support PCI 5.0 DDR5 memory, as well as support AMD's latest 7000 series processors. The X670 Aorus Elite AX also does come with new DIY features, such as our M.2 Easy Latch and PCIe Easy Latch as well. So if you're looking for a budget-friendly X670 motherboard, this one might be the right one for you. So first, let's see what comes inside the box. Of course, when you first open the box, you're gonna have the motherboard itself, but underneath, you're gonna find a lot of goodies. So first we have one of the manuals. Then on the right side, we're gonna be getting a Wi-Fi antenna. This is our Aorus antenna for the Wi-Fi 6E. And on the left side, we do have a number of things. First, we do have our Gigabyte G connector. This makes it so your front panel installation is smoother. As well as we have some N.2 screws. This is the N.2 standoff screw. And finally, we have two SATA cables. We have a right angle connector and a straight connector. Before we continue, we want to remind you to hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help us out and it'll keep you up to date on the latest product releases. So as I mentioned before, the X670 Aorus Elite AX is an entry level motherboard to pair with the Ryzen 7000 series processors. Now let's see what are the new features on this motherboard. Let's first start with the aesthetics of the board. There's going to be no RGB on the Aorus Elite uh, this time around, but we do have a really sleek black and silver design all over the board. You kind of notice there are finned heat sinks uh, right here. We also have a lot of different patterns over here, followed by an etched Aorus logo at the top of the heat sink. Now let's talk about the performance and the thermals on the X670 Aorus Elite AX. So like all X670 motherboards, this one's gonna only support DDR5 memory modules. And of course it'll support AMD's Expo technology, which is their version of XMP. We found the sweet spot for performance on the DDR5 to be at 6,000 megahertz with dual channel. This board does support PCI 5.0 performance on its first M.2 slot. And while X670 motherboards do not support PCI 5.0 on the PCIe, we have added a reinforced layer of armor on the PCIe slot for those of you who are planning to use a heavier duty graphic card. For VRM design, the Aorus Elite is built with 20 total phases utilizing 70 amp smart power stages. And that's a huge improvement from its X570 counterparts. The X670 Aorus Elite AX is equipped with our latest generation thermal designs to make sure it can handle the Ryzen 7000 series processors. We've included some enhancements this time around with an enlarged heat sink on the VRMs. We've also added an enlarged M.2 thermal guard, as you guys can see here, as well as added seven WMK thermal pads and all the essential areas where the board would need them. On X670 motherboards, we're also introducing a brand new feature that we're calling Easy Latch. It'll allow you to install either your M.2 drive or your graphic cards a lot easier. For example, the PCIe Easy Latch has an enlarged tab to allow for easier access when you have a graphic card already installed. Our M.2 Easy Latch will allow you to install the M.2 drive without using a screwdriver. For those of you who want to overclock on this motherboard, we do have a useful function called the multi-key. It's a programmable button that you can set in the BIOS to either turn off the RGBs, load right into your BIOS, or to boot into safe mode. We also have QFlash Plus. It's located on the back panel. With a simple press of a button and a USB drive, you'll be able to update your BIOS without installing CPU, memory, and graphics card. The X670 Aorus Elite AX has some of the best connectivity options for you as well, such as Wi-Fi 6E. It also does have a 20 gigabit per second Type-C USB port for the front panel and also on the back panel as well with up to 22 total USB ports. Uh, that's on the back panel and the internal headers. You're gonna have a lot of wiggle room to play around with with this motherboard. Let's take a quick look at the back panel and what connectors you have over there. 
Of course, we have the Q flash button that we just went over, as well as our Wi Fi antennas. Next to it, we have our HDMI 2.0 port, followed by six USB 3.2 Gen 1s. We also have four USB 2.0s, as well as two USB 3.2 Gen 2s. Those are the red USB ports that you see, as well as a USB Type C. This is going to be on USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, so you can do 20 gigabits per second, as well as a 2.5 gig LAN port, followed by our audio jacks, line in, line out, and for microphone. The XXMD Oris Elite AX is one of our more budget-friendly options for those of you who are considering to pick up one of AMD's new Zen 4 processors. Now, if you're more interested in a higher-end one, we do have the Oris Master, and you can check that out in our other unboxing video. So we hope you enjoyed this quick unboxing video of the XXMD Oris Elite AX. It's our goal to make sure these videos are quick for you to absorb, so be sure to hit the like button if you guys have enjoyed it and leave us a comment down below
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to ROG Pulse, the weekly show where we dive into all things tech and gaming. Today, we're getting our hands on with AMD's latest and most powerful gaming CPU. There it is, the Ryzen 7950X 3D. So we, ROG, have a number of great motherboards that you can pair with this. Uh, today, I'm using the ROG Crosshair X670E Hero with this bad boy, which is just like our our super feature-rich uh, feature rich um, motherboard for you know high level enthusiasts. Uh, it's got all the features that you could want for this. We also have um, some ROG Strix X670E options, as well as uh, a tough gaming uh, X670E option as well. Um, if you're uh, looking for more of a just the essentials kind of route, uh, one thing or a few things to keep in mind. So you've got the chip in hand. Okay, you go to Newegg. You could can't go to Newegg. I guess, but you can go to Newegg.com and buy the CPU. It comes to your house. What do you do next? Well, you've got the motherboard. If you do this tomorrow and you get a motherboard that's been on the shelf and it doesn't have the latest BIOS, you're going to want to go to our site and download the latest BIOS for your motherboard first. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really important in order to get this chip working. So here's the BIOS. It's available on the site. If you don't, uh, if all you have is this CPU, right, um, and... Uh, you, you can't boot the PC to get into the BIOS to update it, you can use our handy dandy BIOS flashback tool. There's a little bit little button on a number of our motherboards that you uh, can put the BIOS on a flash drive, plug it in. There's a specific with USB the, drive the, for the BIOS flashback. Yep, with yep. the computer off, you just press the BIOS flashback button and it will flash the BIOS for you, even if there's no CPU or RAM in the machine. That's awesome. That is so cool and really useful when you've got a new CPU like this um, and the BIOS hasn't been updated for it yet. So download the latest BIOS, flash it with BIOS flashback. The other thing that you will want to do, um, whoops, that's not the right tab, is go to the driver and tools tab on our site and make sure you also download the latest chipset drivers. Uh, if you're building a new PC, this is probably something you would do anyway, but make sure that you do that. Uh, if you already have a PC and you're swapping in a new CPU like I did, you're still going to want to download the latest chipset drivers because that has uh, the drivers necessary to uh, determine which tasks go to which of these uh, two CCDs, right? That's really important uh, if you want to get the best performance out of your, your gaming and your productivity uh, tasks. So make sure that you download the latest BIOS. Make sure you download the latest chipset drivers, and you should be good to go. Uh, by the way, for this machine, we've got an RX 6700 XT in there. I really should have had them send me a 79 or uh, 7900 XTX. I didn't. This is the card we have today, but that's okay because we're testing the CPU. So this card is not going to be doing that much work because we're going to be trying to put the CPU through its paces. Although I did boost this GPU's power target with GPU tweak, because again, why not? Every machine you own, just push the power target of the GPU to max, turn on precision boost overdrive. It's free performance for literally 10 seconds of work. Uh, we're going to do a quick Cinebench run just to kind of see what the CPU can do. And then uh, we're going to do Spider-Man today. Um, I'm going to do this just one minute. Can't go wrong with Spider-Man. Uh, you can't go wrong. I, I felt bad like using the same game that we used like just a couple weeks ago, but actually this ended up being the perfect example. So if you guys remember, a couple weeks ago, uh, we did some, we did another episode of Pulse where we were testing uh, Spider-Man uh, for some different stuff. And it is, it is a CPU heavy game, especially if you crank up ray tracing, which is just beautiful in Spider-Man Remastered. If you crank up ray tracing, it pegs the CPU hard. Plus it's like streaming all these assets as you swing through the city. It's got NPCs and cars running around. That's a lot of work for the CPU to do. And if you guys remember, we were running Spider-Man and getting like sub 60 frames per second. This was yeah. on my personal machine in which I have a 5800X. Now the 5800X is a, actually a great CPU. Yeah. Um, it is handling everything I can throw at it with a plum, but Spider-Man with max ray tracing is, is probably one of the toughest CPU bound games right now. So if you wanna see what a brand new CPU can do, it is a good CPU to run. They should stop putting pegs in CPU. That's not what I meant. <laughs> All right. Almost 35,000 points in multi-core Cinebench. That is 
crazy. That's, Huge. I mean, so we've, we've never not, I mean, it, we've seen that score before from like the, it, it's pretty close to the 7950X, the regular 7950X. Um, but that's like, that's what's amazing. This is an X3D processor, right? That kind of is, is the best gaming processor on the market. But again, it's also still a, a productivity machine. So that is a really, really good score. Um, and that's something that like the 5800X3D, right? Um, if you back at the, the 5000 series generation, you had to choose between the 5800X 3D for top tier gaming or something like uh, the 5950X that you had uh, for more cores. This, you do not have to choose anymore. Well, yeah, so follow us guys if you haven't followed us already. Uh, we'll be playing with more hardware as the, as the weeks go on. Um, I'm probably gonna be sending this PC back to Eric. We'll be coming out with some articles for it, maybe some guides and stuff. But yeah, get excited. If you like the video, Please click on the like button, write a comment, and subscribe to my channel.